And I think the two there were two factors in in World War II that were were very very important. The first thing I got to tell you though that World War II was such a big deal that no single event or no single thing won the war. You know, for example, there was a lot of things that happened that were important. And as far as the air war and how we defeated the Luftwaffe, I think you can point to two things. The arrival of a P-51 Mustang in Europe, which meant then that we could go anywhere the B-17s were in Germany. If we could fly, overfly Germany. We could go to Posen, Poland. We could go to Czechoslovakia. We actually made raids to Russia, down to Italy, and back. Um, the, the, the airplane was fantastic. It was very good at high altitude, but low altitude, and it had this tremendous range, and that's what they needed at that time. Um, give you an idea, uh, my average combat missions were four and a half hours. The longest one I ever flew was uh, six hours and 55 minutes, and that was on D day. And I still had a good hour of fuel after I got back. But let's, let's go to the time when we first got over there. Uh, and, 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 and then I have to remind you that um, the Army Air Corps thought that using the heavy bombers in formation in daylight so they could get accurate bombing with the Norton bomb site, so they could go after military targets, that they could go into Germany and destroy those military targets and win the war, you know. Well, it didn't happen that way. Um, the Brits tried it, and they got such tremendous losses that they started bombing at night. Well, we're Americans, so we're going to do it our way. Remember we called it the Flying Fortress? It could fight its way in and fight its way out. It had a 10-man crew and uh, machine guns in all different directions. And they flew with these little three-ship uh, bees into a uh, a greater formation to maximize their uh, their firepower, but uh, they could not go alone. The Luftwaffe uh, could slaughter them if they didn't have fighter escort. We had fighters over there, P-47s uh, and uh, the P-38, but they couldn't go the full distance that uh, that the B-17s wanted to go to every target they had. So uh, they were taking tremendous losses. Uh, Regensburg in the fall of um, '43, something like 60 bombers. You know, that 600 men went down in just one day. And so they finally decided, hey, we've got to have long-range uh, fighter escort. Uh, without going into the uh, details of it, because that's another. 30 minute story about how the Mustang was developed. But the Mustang almost got there by accident. It was built for the British, not for the Army Air Corps. And, uh, but it arrived at the right time with, with the conversion to the Merlin engine, which gave it that tremendous performance. And uh, the arrival of that Mustang in the theater uh, in the, in the fall of 1943 was significant. Now, you go to the other thing. The 8th Air Force was run by bomber pilots and uh, the bomber philosophy. And uh, when they, they finally realized that they had to have fighter escort, they dictated our escort tactics because they ran the 8th Air Force and we belonged to the 8th Air Force. And they said, we want you to fly with us, close to us, we want to see you. Really wasn't the way to do it, but those were the orders. They said, when the enemy comes in, you drive them away and then come back. You can follow them to 18,000 feet, then you break off the attack and come back up. Well, you know, that's what we did. And uh, the spring of 1944, well, I think it was actually the uh, Late winter of 44, General Jimmy Doolittle took over the 8th Air Force. And he had a little different background and a different philosophy about warfare. So he 
he gave an official order. It came out in, a, in a, you know, to all the fighter groups in the 8th Air Force, and it was called Pursue and Destroy. And he said, now, you fighter pilots, when you engage the enemy, you take them to the ground and kill them. Pursue and destroy. In the spring of uh, 1944, I think uh, most historians agree that that's the time when we broke the back of the Luftwaffe. And how we did it, they still had plenty of airplanes uh, to fly. They ran short of pilots. Uh, experience.